Okay, so it says in the circuit represented below, voltmeter V1 reads, now read this part very carefully, guys. It, it reads 12 volts when the switch is open. So guys, did you know that when the switch is open, there is no electricity flowing in the circuit, then this voltmeter over here, which is connected across the battery, is gonna give you the EMF of the battery. That is something important that you must understand. When there is no electricity flowing in the circuit, then it will give you the EMF of the battery. So what they are trying to tell you in an indirect way is that voltmeter V1 is reading 12 volts. When the switch is open, that means that the 12 volts is the EMF. EMF. And if you didn't know that, you might not be able to do some of these questions. So you must understand that part. Okay. And then it says that when the switch is closed, then all of a sudden the voltage is 10.8. Aha. So if you've watched any of my exam paper questions on electricity, you would have seen me speaking about these things a lot. And I'm going to give you guys a quick little summary um, on a basic circuit. Okay. So let's see. Let's, let's say that the switch is open. Okay. Let's make a little open switch. Um, something like that here. Eh? Okay, so there the switch is open. And so then if you have a voltmeter connected over here, that voltmeter will read the EMF. That will be the EMF. And that will maybe be, let's say that's 12 volts, for example. I'll just use the same example, the same numbers that they're using over here. Then um, let's say we have a circuit again, but this time the switch is closed. Now that same voltmeter, guys, is going to be less. It's going to be that voltmeter, which is measuring across the battery, that is maybe going to say 10.8 volts. 10.8 volts. Now listen up carefully. That 10.8 volts is the voltage that is being used in the circuit. Uh, let me actually do that in a little bit of a better way. That is being used over here in the circuit. Okay, so we call that, your teacher might call this the terminal voltage, or you might call it the external voltage. Okay, now I want you to think about this with me. You went to the shop and you went and you bought a 12 volt battery. That's what it says on the battery, 12 volts. Then when you get home and you plug the, the battery into the circuit, all of a sudden it's telling you that you only have 10.8 volts. So what happened to the other 1.2 volts? That 1.2 volts that is lost, it gets used up inside the battery. Okay. And that is called the lost volts. The lost volts is inside the battery. So that's the lost. And that's going to be 1.2 volts. Okay. So these are just the basics of how a circuit actually works. So this is, so the EMF is 12 volts. Then the V external or the terminal voltage is 10.8. All right, we might need to use that, I'm not sure. So the first question says, um, oh yeah, I forgot to read this up as well. It says when the switch is closed, um, the power dissipated in R2 is two watts. Okay, so an R2 is two watts. All right. So it says that voltmeters have a very high resistance, blah, 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 blah. That's normal stuff. Okay, so it says calculate the reading on the ammeter. Now, where's the ammeter? It's over there. So we must understand that obviously we're just going to use I equals to V over R. Now, we're not going to just choose any voltage and any resistance. Um, actually, we're not going to use that formula. There's not enough information. But what we can do, guys, is we can look at this little resistor over here. And what we know about that resistor is the power and the resistance. So you know the different power formulas that we get, like this one and this one and this one. We will use the one that uses power and resistance. And so, of course, that could be this one over here. And so we can just say two is equal to I squared. We don't know. 
multiplied by the resistance of eight, we would get I squared equals to two over eight, which is a quarter. We take the square root and we get a half. Now, if there's any of you who are super technical, you might be saying, Kevin, isn't it plus and minus a half? Yeah, technically, but um, we're busy with electricity here, guys. Now, we're not going to have current that flows. You can't have negative current, okay? So we're just going to say a half amps. And that's where the 0 0.5 comes from over there. Because um, what we have actually just worked out right now is that the amount of electricity that is flowing through this little resistor here is 0 0.5 amps. But that also means that the electricity flowing in this part is all going to be 0 0.5 amps because that whole part there that I've highlighted in red is actually in series. So that is why the answer is also going to be 0 0.5 amps. Okay, next question for three marks says calculate the reading on voltmeter V2. I just want to quickly remember that we've got 0 0.5 amps over here. Okay, guys, so check this out. V2 is over there. Now, this, um, this branch here is in parallel with this branch, um, this branch over here. They are in parallel with each other. Now, what do we know about voltage in parallel? Voltage in parallel is the same. So what I suggest is that we calculate the voltage in the green branch because we have quite a lot of information there. And then we can just let that be the same as the voltage of the red branch, okay? So let's get the voltage in the green branch. Voltage in the green branch. Now that will be quite easy to do. The reason is we know the current is 0.5. And we also know the total resistance. It will be 2 plus 8. So the total resistance in that green branch will be 10 ohms. So we can use I equals to V over R. And we can say that the current is 0 0.5. The voltage is what we are trying to calculate. And the resistance is 10 ohms. So if we then had to go calculate the voltage, we should get 5 volts. Now, what that means is that the green branch is five volts. But because the red and the green are in parallel, we can therefore say that V2 is also going to be five volts because it's in parallel. Okay. Excellent. Five volts. Okay, guys, let's move on to 8.1.3 for four marks. It says calculate the current which is flowing in the battery. Okay, so <clears throat> let's clear up a little bit here. So we know that there's 0 0.5 amps flowing over here, and we know that there is uh, five volts over there. And so let's try to think about how we can maybe, how we can maybe calculate the current. Oh, okay, guys, so I need to explain something to you. Um, you see over here, we had a 12 volt battery in the very beginning. That 12 volts is the maximum amount of voltage that that battery can ever give. But what happens is that some of the voltage is gonna be lost inside the battery. How many volts get lost inside the battery? 1.2 volts. So how many volts are actually going to be used in the circuit? 10,8. So where, where does that 10,8 volts get used? Some of it is going to be used here in the parallel part of the circuit. And some of it is going to be used in this resistor over there. So we know that this parallel branch over here is 5 volts. And we also know that this branch here is also 5 volts. So what that means is that the total voltage in this part of the circuit is not 10 it is still going to be considered five volts, okay? So there is five volts being used in this part of the circuit. So then how many volts are actually going to be used in this little resistor? Well, that would have to be 
minus the five. And so that would be five comma eight volts flowing in that resistor. Or well, not flowing, your volts doesn't flow, but we've got 5.8 volts in that resistor, okay? So now what we could do is we could just have a look at, um, let's quickly to get rid of this. Let's just look at this area over here. And just on that little resistor, we could use I equals to V over R. And that's gonna be 5.8 volts over the total resistance of 2.9. And that's gonna give us two amps. Now, that is the answer, but some of you might be thinking, yeah, but Kevin, how do we know that that's the current flowing in the battery? The reason is guys, it's the following. So if we get rid of all of this other nonsense here, if you, think of what, if you think about the way electricity flows, then you'll have a better understanding of this. We know that the electricity flows over here. It goes this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Then when it gets over here, we are entering a place where the electricity can now decide, does it want to go up or does it want to go to the right? That is the beginning of parallel. So what happens is that some of the electricity is going to go this way up to there, and then the rest would maybe go here. Then it would join up at this little point over here. It would be combined again, and all of a sudden, the original current that we started with would be flowing through here. So can we see that the amount of electricity that is flowing through the battery is the same as the electricity flowing through the 2.9 ohm resistor because those parts are part of the main circuit. They're not part of the parallel part. They are part of the main circuit. Hope that makes sense. Okay, um, and that's it. So now it says the next question. It says for three marks, it says calculate the internal resistance of the battery. So, there are so many different ways that you could do this, this question right now. Um, I'll show you guys one of my favorite little shortcuts on how to do a question like this, but some of you might not like it, and then I'll show you another way, okay? So the best way that I like to do these questions is the following. I know that there's I equals to V over R. That is a common formula, uh, Ohm's law, okay? But that formula can be used in different places on the circuit. For example, if you want to use the terminal voltage of the battery. Now, what is the terminal voltage? It's the uh, external voltage. It's the voltage, earlier we said it was the 10.8. Then which resistors would go with that one? Well, well done if you realize that this is the, the voltage for the outside part of the circuit. So you would use all the resistors on the outside. So that would be R1, R2, R3, and R4. Okay. Then some of you don't know this, but you could also use the internal voltage or the lost volts, whatever you want to call it. If you use the lost voltage, then which resistor would you use? Well, the lost voltage is inside the battery. So that means you would use the resistor inside the battery. And so you would use the little r. And then finally, what if you decided that you would like to use not the external, not the internal, but you would rather like to use everything? Well, then you would be using the EMF. So we can use the EMF if you want, but then you've got to ask yourself, what resistances would you have to use? Well, then you would have to use the external resistors and the internal resistor of the battery. And this is a formula that you've probably seen before, but your teacher probably writes it more like this. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's all going to be I equals V over R. And the problem is, is that in class, we get taught how to use this one too many times, or this one, but we don't really get explained a lot of this one and this one. Okay. So what this now means is that I can calculate the resistance of the battery very easily if I just decide to use um, this formula over here. I can just use that one. 
because what it tells me is that the current, which is uh, two amps, is equal to the lost volts, which is 1.2, right? Because we have 12 volts is our EMF and 10.8 is the external. And then we're going to say, um, where was our writing? Over the internal resistance. And then if you had to go rearrange everything, you should eventually find out that the internal resistance is going to be 0 0.6 ohms. Okay. So the other formula that you guys could have used, and I know that a lot of people would have preferred to use this one, would have been this one over here. And the way that would have worked is you would have used the EMF as 12. You would have used the current as two. And then for the resistors, you would have had to go and calculate R. Now, remember what that R is. That R is the total external resistances. So it would be this one and this one and this one and this one over here. Okay. And so that would be the other approach that you could have used. All right. And of course, you will still get to the same answer. Okay. But I think, yeah, you guys can try that one if you want, but make sure you get to an answer of 0 0.6. Okay, but I'm gonna quickly move ahead now to the last little question of this one, which is a multiple, not a multiple choice, it's a theory question. And what they tell us is the following. They say, R4 is replaced by a conductor with negligible resistance. Okay, how will this affect the power in R2? Haha, <laughs> so guys, think about this very carefully. What they are doing here is they are gonna take R4 out. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna take it away, and they're gonna replace it with a conductor. So they're gonna replace it with a piece of wire. So let's literally just go take this thing out completely. Let's take it out, okay? And then let's just replace it with a piece of wire, like that. And so what we must understand now is that if you are electricity, or no, I can't say that. Let's say um, if uh, imagine, let's imagine how electricity works. When electricity gets to this part of the circuit, okay, it is going to choose the path with lowest resistance. But because this wire has no resistance, all of the electricity is going to go this way. All of it is going to go this way. And none of the electricity is going to go through this branch. So because this R2 is not going to have any electricity flowing through it, we will say that the power is going to become zero. Okay, um, we can just say something like all current will go through the conductor. Something like that. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense, guys.